So, fresh palette. I don't remember what, uh, I don't remember what colors I used to paint this lady. Like, exactly. So, we've got to mix skin tones to uh, match skin tones and armor tones to match so we can paint the arm and the sword. So, I just got some like base, some, some generic colors. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna put stuff on our palette and start making some mixtures to color match. I'm good. How are you doing? So we'll get some, some black. Uh, just Vallejo in the primer, like Vallejo black primer in the bottle. Sometimes I use the gray also. If I want to Zenithal. I like the gray a little more. It's pretty light gray. Um, and it isn't quite as grainy as the white. Grab that. Grab a little bit of the magenta. Don't need a lot of that. This is, I don't want, that's the old orange. That one's very liquidy. Grab some orange. It's the main thing we use for the skin tone. Uh, and then we can either go with like warm yellow or we could do the Daryl Eyed Yellow. I'm going to use the Daryl Eyed Yellow. You can see it's, it's pretty similar, but it's slightly more orange. And ivory. Okay. So, skin tone, right? The, the main, you need to make a base color for the skin, for the hand. Let me zoom in for you guys. So, black, orange, makes a nice dark brown. white or ivory in this case. Okay, this is too orange at this stage. I can grab a little of this blue, which is gonna make it kind of green, a little greenish. And then just a touch of the magenta, just to add some red. A little more white. Evening, everyone. And we have a pretty standard warm base for our skin tone. Let's see next to the actual model, right? Now it might be a little too orange at this stage, but we're going to build up lights and shadows on top of it. We can adjust the uh, color more later. We're just trying to get a starting point.
How's everyone doing this evening? Been working on anything? Painting some stuff? Yes, no, maybe. I hope so. Okay. Make sure we get good coverage over everything. Go a little bit darker for the inside of the fingers. Finished one of the black crow drawers, nice. A little more red in the shadows. Working on the Mother Nature bust from Journeyman. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure I know the figure, but I'm not. Sh I don't particularly know the the figure by name. I've said before how bad I am with names of figures because I don't even remember some of the the figures uh, names that I did the box art for. Okay. Cool. So, whoop, let me get on camera. So we got to think about lighting direction, right? Which way is the light coming from? You know that the light is basically coming from top, top right. Hi, Rosario Rivas. Okay, so we're going to focus most of the light up here on the fingers. Uh, yeah, I know the one. And then inside here, the inside fingers are not going to get a lot of light. Move the camera slightly. Okay. And then on the back of the hand. Bit on the top of the hand here, on the thumb, something like that. Then we want to get an intermediate tone. Something like so. So notice, um, 
that I'm not trying to like define all the little uh, bones in the hand yet. All these, all these like bones and tendons in the back of your hand, they're really not like that defined, okay? So it's more about uh, small, small adjustments. Okay, on this part, we'll push just a touch of light here. Now, we know that the light on uh, the fingers is going to be really high, so let's take some of the yellow, some of the white mixed together. This is why I really like the Dairy line, dairy line, dairy line. Uh, when you mix it with white, it creates a really nice light, warm skin tone. Okay. We're just sketching the light and then that's going to be too warm or too too bright for the back of the hand now we can start to create these a little bit so not too much yeah still it's still mostly one one shape but i can begin to get a little bit of the the shape in the the knuckles and stuff. Okay. Uh, no actual red. I'm just using some magenta if I want to adjust the uh, the amount of red in the mixture. So it's it's orange and magenta. Get some shape on the back of the hand. And then a little more red around the knuckles will start to build up some of this color tone in here. And using small brush strokes to create intermediate values, start to soften these. And we'll, as we like glaze and blend, it'll uh, start to smooth these out. Okay. You see, we're already getting close to a pretty natural skin tone. It's pretty dang similar to mine. Keep pushing the light. Now, the back of the hand does not face directly towards the light source. So we don't want an, a crazy amount. Yeah, it's not pure white, it's ivory. I, I say pure white because I'm using it as a substitute for white, but it's not. Okay, just a little more.
Okay. So the goal here is to get the roundedness to the fingers. And the shape of the back of the hand. The color between blue and orange. So this is phthalo blue. This is uh it's not super important. It's it's elfic blue. It's just like a kind of ultramarine blue tone that's slightly gray. So if you compare it to like ultramarine, it's pretty close, but it's got some white in it. Uh, it'll be useful for the for the armor when we go to do that, and I can mix I can mix just a touch into the the skin to desaturate it a little. So like if I take this very dark orange brown and mix some of the blue into it, you can see it turns very gray. See how gray, see how gray that becomes. No, this is orange. Oh, my volume's turned way down. Uh, I didn't hear Adrock or Adrock 404 and Pol Polks Polska dot. Hello. Uh, so yeah, you get a very grayish tone. Now that's too gray, but you can use you can I can use the little bit of the blue to desaturate. Right, so I can start to create some some desaturated shadows. Because we don't want the skin to be completely saturated everywhere. We want to create little variations in the skin tone so I can put some of that down and then build an intermediate tone back up and create some some variation This orange looks so much red oxide. This is orange. This is pure orange. See that? It looks the orange is more intense, but when you when you start to thin it out, it looks more more orange. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep building a uh, little intermediate, little intermediate mixtures till I eventually get the light where I want it. Well, welcome, Polska Dot. I appreciate you uh, coming by. Excuse me. 
Okay, let's keep pushing that light. So, where are the highlights going to be, right? Well, we got to get the shape of this thumb right. Okay, so because the light's coming in from this direction, right, the inside of the thumb, right here. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, I guess it would be better if I did it this way because it's the right hand, right? So... The light comes basically the way my hand is now. So, all right, the fingers, the knuckles are going to get white. I'm going to have to put red around the knuckles because she's gripping. And then you get light here. what's compared to the skin tone we have. So we know that we have to push the light a lot more. I like to take, you can take just a little bit of the blue, it's just a touch. Cool off the light a little bit so it's not uh, like pure yellowish. Oh, the hair. Okay. Right, so this finger is going to get a lot of light. And the knuckles. Okay, and then this inside here, and on the thumb. So this is yellow, Daryl-eyed yellow. It looks orange, it's, it's really more yellowish. And then there's the smallest amount of blue added to desaturate just a touch. And we're still not at a final highlight. Like, we're going to go really bright. But we have to make sure everything's kind of working together first okay so we keep pushing and then and then we pull back and blend and then we push more all right so now if if it feels like the back of the hand is a little too dark we can we can bring the light up a little on the back of the hand. Well, thank you. You have to remember, though, that the guys that are working in, in uh, special effects, right? The special effects industry. Uh, they're shooting stuff, they're making stuff to work on camera. So they're also not spending, you know, for a miniature. They don't have time to spend uh, 
40 hours on, on one figure, you know? But I will say that um, if you if you don't know, there's a guy named John Rosengrant, uh, who is one of the founder of legacy effects he did like grogu and worked on aliens and pretty much every like the terminator and blah 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 blah, blah. the guy's got a heck of an imdb well he also does miniatures and he's mostly into uh historic like uh Rosen Grant. I'll type it in case you want to check out his IMDb. John Rosen Grant. Uh, he also does miniatures. And he's come, he, he attends a show in Philadelphia. Uh, and I went last year and won Best of Fantasy, and he won uh, Best of Ordinance, which is like the tank, tank category. So, they're up there in skill. <laughs> Go figure, the guy that can, uh, you know, that worked on Avatar can also uh, paint a heck of a of a scale model tank. Really nice dude, by the way. It was funny. <clears throat> it was funny when I met him, because um, all I wanted to do was talk about aliens and and you know the movies that I grew up on. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, I've been talking about these for." 30 some years can we uh i'd rather talk about your figures and i was like okay we can talk about my figures i guess hi john uh john ten fool hi hi jonas hello Nice guy though, super humble. I was like, I was like, dude, I wanna <laughs> You're one of the two like he was he was one of the two puppeteers for the Alien Queen and Aliens. Uh if you've seen the Netflix documentary, the movies that made us, he's in it. And he's he's talking about being one of basically the pilots of the Alien Queen. And he's like, yeah, I want to talk about your figures. And I'm like, dude, I just want to, I just want to ask you about all these movies you worked on. Okay. Someone asked a question about color. Shiny M3. Oh. Uh, sometimes you say that the color doesn't matter. What do you mean by that? I ask because some people seem obsessed with color recipes. The reason I say the color, the exact color doesn't matter is because literally I'm mixing a skin tone right now to match her skin. 
and I am using probably like almost none of the colors I used before. That's why I say color doesn't matter. The exact color doesn't matter, right? I have no idea if these were the same, the same uh, bottles of paint that I used when I painted her face. In fact, I painted her face twice, so it's definitely not. Uh, but I can create, if, if you have a good understanding of color mixing, you can create any color you want. Eric, good evening. Are you teaching classes at Nova this year? Yes, I am teaching this year. No, I am not teaching the workshop. As of right now, this is, I know who's teaching the workshop. Um, I am not going to say because I don't think it's public knowledge. Uh, I will be teaching more shorter classes throughout the week but I do know who is teaching the two-day workshop. Okay, so see, now I'm starting to define the, the, the little bones and tendons in the back of the hand but th this even this level is overdoing it so i'm going to let that dry i'll work on something else i'll wait for that to dry and then i'll uh soften that right we don't want her to have old lady hands Hello, Prank Thunder. Thanks for following. Welcome. I can tell you it has not been. It has not been and it has not met. Well, thanks, Crane. Here, just trying to, to share my knowledge, you know? All right, let's take a little bit more of the magenta, real subtle, and we're gonna start to come back in, and we're gonna go over and we're just gonna with a real thin layer, basically a glaze. We're gonna to start to soften these transitions back out. Dude, I would be stoked if a uh, student of mine, like, won a big competition one day. I mean, I've had students do well, but, like, come on, man. Bring it on. Crush me.
Okay, so we make it a little more subtle. Absolutely, why wouldn't you be? You should be super excited when, when your students do well. I've done basically everything I want to do in competition painting. I mean, sure, I'll, I'll keep, tr you know, entering and doing stuff, but uh, there isn't really any goals I have left in, in competition painting. I B P V N V I cannot read that. P V Nini mean, Nini Mini. I don't know what is going on. I'm, I'm painting a hand. I'm painting a hand for this lady. Monty is the best show. All right, let's take some more of the magenta. We're going to thin it out. See? Nice and thin. Look on my fingernail. So you can barely see it. Okay? It's a glaze. Uh, and we're going to put some color around the knuckles. I'm going to build up some, some more reddish tone on the knuckles. Hello, Ryan. Ryan K2. And... And PB Mimi. Thanks for following, guys. I'm at LVO next week. I'm hoping for a silver as I got a bronze last year. I entered standard, but they bumped me up. I think the judging is pretty loosey-goosey, though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, every competition is different, and then even every, you know, year at a competition could be different because a lot of competitions change change the judges right so as the judges change the competition the the uh the judging changes i think the good goal to have is just do the best you can Oh, yeah, I'm sure most of the, so that's the only problem with Monty is the hotels, like getting a hotel is nearly impossible because, um, most of the hotels are booked by, uh, the organization because there's not that many hotels in that town. Um, so it, you're better off getting like an Airbnb. Because a lot of the town knows, so it's the biggest event like that town has. The town is like five thousand people, right? It's a small little town in uh, in Italy. I don't know if it's actually five thousand. It might be more than that, but it's a small town, and um, you're better off getting an Airbnb because the residents know that that's like the biggest event of the year for that town in terms of, like, the number of people who come. Um, so a lot of them go on vacation and do their apartments or, or little houses, villas and stuff for, the, for that weekend. And the people that, like, stick around are mostly just people that own the restaurants and stuff.
I got feedback from Will Hahn, I think was the main judge. No, well, I don't think Will was the main judge, but I don't know which Will Hahn also. Thing was, I didn't know him to see him, and I wasn't sure why he was giving me feedback. It was great feedback, but I thought, oh, next to him was Will Hahn. There is two Will Hans. And I think they were both judges at, at LVO. Zazzled Comics. Hello. Thank you for the prime. I appreciate it. Okay, so now we want to get, right, let's do some really small highlights. I'm, I'm as zoomed in as I can get, baby. So... So now we're going to really push the light. Okay. These, these are final highlights. Yes, the younger Will Hahn. There's an older Will Hahn who's been around for a while that was known for doing like Golden Demon in the 90s. You're talking about younger. Younger Will Okay, so now we want to start to get some of these, these really intense lights on the knuckles, right? So like when we squeeze the knuckles, or we get the, the really bright, bright lights. Yeah, and they're not related. Okay, so we get some of these intense lights here. Well, I guess I could see how Han would seem Asian, H-A-N, Han, but Will Han is H-A-H-N, and that's very German. Because there is a insanely good painter from China. I think it's China. Maybe it's Singapore. But I'm pretty sure it's China. Named uh, Darren Han. But it's H-A-N. All right. Cool. So... Right, so we start to really get some of those strong highlights on. Now we're gonna come back in and filter some some shadow back into the skin. Best of the best. Best of the best. Best of the best is that the the move the martial arts movie? Yeah, Darren Hahn does a lot of uh, uh, like one six scale. He does like repaints of um, what do you call it? like the sideshow collectibles or like the hot toys heads and stuff so he'll take he'll take those and do like yeah super realistic repaints on on them it's very impressive okay so so look what we're doing we we're coming back in now that we've got like the, the lights how we want it and i'm coming back in with just some some of the shadow very thin down and just glazing and unifying and creating some additional shape and color to back into the skin. Yeah. 
Scott Scottian. Hello. Welcome. And the Twitch stream's been kind of gaining some steam recently. I don't know what's uh, what's been going on, but uh, I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out and watching. Okay, let's get. Let's look at this. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's not super bright. By the way, if you don't want mod if you want if you don't want moderation help on here, I was joke, but oh. I mean we haven't had much trouble. Yeah, I don't like, uh, I'm not big on music on streams. Like if you got, if you want to listen to music while I paint, you can, you can put your own soundtrack on my, uh, my videos. Maybe you want a little bit, 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 If anybody knows what that is, congratulations. Pretty sure probably most, a lot of you do know what song that is. There's like a little pit in the... Uh... Knuckle here. Try and just fill it in. Okay. A little more pink. A little slightly rosy one. Get this little light right here. So you got to think about like sometimes the light will get in between the knuckles also, right? It's not just on the raised surface. Sometimes you get them, right? If I go like that, look at the light, the light hits in between the fingers also. So I have to think about the lighting direction and the fact that the, the light is almost coming directly at these fingers and the light will hit in between those two fingers. I smots AF, hello. Immortal Chaos. Hi. Welcome. Okay. Let's have let's have uh, some fun. Let's think about something real quick. Okay. So let's look at the hand. See how it's working with the uh, the figure. It might not be quite orange. It might be a little too red at this point. Okay. Let's look at it with the finger. It's probably a little too red. I think I need to adjust and add some some more darker tones specifically to the bottom. Okay. Increase the shadows. Um, the lights are pretty close. I could maybe make them a little bit more yellow and push them a little higher. And yeah. So that's what we need to do to make a match. The wandering lands. Welcome. All right, Scott. Scott's got a long question. Let me read it. Let me take a sip first and then I'll read it. Uh, all right. 
Eric, when picking up a project, do you see a mini and have a vision jump into your head of what you want to accomplish? Or do you have a vision or technique first and find a project to match? That's a good question. Like, do you see a mini and think I could do something sweet with this armor? Or do you think I want to paint some sweet armor and grab the mini? I, I think it's both. Well, now not so much. Now it's more of the, the, the first. I could do something sweet with this, okay? Because now, because this is my job, I paint a lot of box arts, I have to do... Uh, I have to do more work um, with the figures I'm given, right? I don't get to... I get some say, like, yeah, yes, I want to paint that. No, I don't want to paint that. That... But a lot of times it's, I get a figure and I have to uh, do something, you know, I've got to be the first person to paint it and, and think of something to do with the figure, right? So, um, it's very much the, the former where it's like, okay, this is the figure. What am I going to do with it? As opposed to like, me being like, I want to paint something and then having to search out a figure. When I was not a professional and I was a hobbyist, it was a lot more of, I want to work on X, whether X would be like OSL or non-metallic or just painting faces. And I would find figures that would allow me to work on those specific things. Okay. Apparently they found out that taurine, which is in Red Bull, might be anti-aging. Hey man. I turned 39 on uh, on Sunday. I, I feel like I'm looking pretty good. It's all that Red Bull, you know? I've had literally no one. There was a there was a whole discussion at uh, Monty of people trying to guess what my age was because everybody and everyone thought I was younger than I actually am. Well, happy birthday, uh, Fenric! Let's go January fourteenth. It's not belated. It's early. It's early. It's not my birthday yet. It's the beard helps too, man. That and the fact that I don't like work outside in the elements probably helps also. People that work out in the sun and stuff a lot tend to look a little older because... Turns out that, you know, being out in the sun all day long is not particularly good for your skin. Okay. So, let's take a little bit of the black, a little bit of the blue, make a dark glaze with a little of the orange. That's too much blue. Right, so we want to or too much orange. Okay, so we make a nice deep orangish gray. We're gonna glaze. We're gonna push these shadows a little bit.
Does a zoomed in camera help you paint? It seems like you look at the monitor before and after you make a stroke. No, I'm really looking at the monitor to just make sure I, I'm just trained to train myself to look at the monitor, make sure I'm staying on, like I'm not moving out of frame and that it's in focus and everything. More so than like needing it to uh, see what I'm doing. This is not the arrow brush, this is the round. This is the arrow. See, so it looks like a round when you look at it from this way, but then it's like that. Adjust the shadows a little bit more. Okay, how's this feel? Yeah. All right, so comparing with her, it's getting closer. The interesting thing is we don't want, so we actually, we want this more to be a half tone because it's not really in shadow and it's not really in light. Okay, it's somewhere in between. So we want to get a strong amount of color in these mid-tones, which is where you're going to get the, the highest saturation. Right? Your shadows tend to desaturate a bit. You can get extremely strong shadows, but uh, like bounce lights and, thing, and things tend to desaturate. And then you, you lose some saturation in the lights which we're going to take and glaze some of the Daryloid into the white areas to get some of that warmth back in here. Because her mid-tones, uh, her light values are quite uh, uh, yellowish. Okay. Uh, I haven't used it a ton. It is useful, though, for specific things. It's good for sketching. The hand is a little small for that brush. Um, I would I'd want a little more precision. Yes, thank many man sir. Thank you. I do. I have an FAQ section in the Discord you can check out if you want to join the Discord. The link is below. time since we've been glazing we got to push the lights again but just a touch of blue in the lights to give that kind of sky hey Zaba in here hey what's up dude somebody's up late
All right. So, and, yeah. Now let's check how we feel now. Pretty good. Sure, there's some more adjustments we can make, but feels pretty, uh, feels pretty good. Who's that? Manjiro Sano, hello. Wandering Lands, I think I got here. But welcome everyone. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of a core shadow here. If you don't know what a core shadow is, a core shadow, sometimes referred to as a terminator, uh, is the deepest part of your shadow, okay? So on her, even though, whoops, drop the sword, whatever. Uh, so on her, the core shadow is right here, right? On her cheek, because she has a bounce light over here, right? Even though from here over is all shadow. So this from here to here, let me get, let me zoom in, okay? So from here, to here is shadow, right? But this is lighter than this because this is a bounce light. So this is the core shadow or sometimes referred to as the terminator. These tones in here, right? These, these more reddish tones are called half tones. These are lights, right? So this area over here, I actually could blend that a little better. But, uh, and then this, right, is a highlight. We overuse the word highlight to refer to anything that's in light, right? This is a highlight. This is a highlight. This is close to a highlight, but it's kind of just light, right? This is a halftone, even though it's, you could refer to it as a halftone shadow. But this shadow right here is much lighter than this over here. It's even lighter. It's actually significantly lighter than this, than this bounce light. This halftone is closer to like this over here. Yes, the half tones. And that's pretty much true for anything, is the half tones tend to be the most saturated part. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of a core shadow on the back of her hand. And then we're going to take some of this more grayish tone here that's still in our shadow values, right? Like these are still, this is still quite dark. And we're going to paint a little, a little bounce light on the bottom of her hand. Because the light will come and hit the, the like hilt of the sword or her chest, like the armor on her chest and create a, uh, a bounce light on the bottom of her hand, like on the bottom of her fingers. Halftone is semi-interchangeable semi with mid-tone, yeah. Midtone is is kind of tough because midtone doesn't really refer to anything. Midtone refers to anything that's in between two tones, right? Um, so if I have a highlight, if I have if I have a highlight and another light, a midtone could be anything in between those two, right? A half tone specifically for refers to the uh 
the intermediate tone between the light values and the core shadow. I hope that made some sense. Correct. Yes, all half tones are mid tones, but not all mid tones are half tones. That is an accurate statement. Okay, so we get a little of these gray tones in here as a bounce light. And then we have our more core shadow. And we can adjust the light here a little. Round over the wrist a little bit, shrink that core shadow, and then we can actually make it a little darker if we want. Since we are doing the chiaroscuro, I want to push that, make those shadows Pretty intense. Okay, let's get some of the red back. I know not everyone is into like the art terminology stuff, but uh, because of not a lot of uh, tutorial makers and things in, in the miniature painting community, no, no, uh, not throwing any shade at, at content creators, the content creators out there, but the, uh, some, some terminology has been mislabeled because of, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have art backgrounds and that's fine. That's a okay. But I think we can do a better job at, uh, informing people correctly. Well, you have hue, you have value, and then you have chroma or saturation. I say saturation just because I have also a uh, um, what's it called? Computer, like a lot of Photoshop, you know, experience in graphic graphic design and things, which computers refer to chroma as uh, saturation, but they are effectively the same thing. So the three, the three things that make up any given color or tone are hue, saturation, and value.
Okay. Yeah, I don't know what the heck they're referring to and what I'd like. I don't know what Vibrance does specifically. Like what that slider does in Lightroom. I have no idea. It does some weird thing where it like only affects certain hues. It's like, you want me to just crank the yellow parts? All right, do we want to get fancy? How fancy are we feeling, lads? So we have the hand basically painted. I'm sure there's some small adjustments. Really, I don't even have to worry about this stuff back here because, like, you'll never see it because it's behind her. It's going to be all facing back. You'd have to, like, it's, like, right next to her. So... Okay, so even even ladies, especially depending on how pale they are, I want you guys to let's see if I can I can get this looking right. Can you guys see the veins in my hand? What if I do this? Huh? Do you see them? Okay, I'm gonna go like this, and I have to stand up to do this. Hi, Mr. Ripper. All right, or I have to squeeze. I go like this. So, yeah, I have to get up. All right, so first we have to think about, and you're gonna watch as they, oh, it's happening. Okay, so if my arm is below my heart, right, then my veins are going to, like, start to gain, like, actual dimension, right? They start to stick out, okay? The second I lift my hand up above my heart, right, they all go away. They, like, they fall back down. But... <laughs> If my arm, if my veins are below, right, I'll get them to try and get them to pop out again. Maybe my right arm will do it more. Yeah, so you can really you can see that one a little better that it has like its own shadow and stuff. I don't have like super vascular veins in my hand, anyways, but you can see they have like some dimension, right. Well, the second I squeeze my hand into a fist, they go under, they go like back under the skin. Okay? The point I'm trying to make is that if I want to paint veins on her hand, right, do I want them to be above the skin? Like, do I want them to have dimension or not? If I want them to have dimension, I have I'm gonna it will be a different process where I'd paint the veins and then I'd paint little lights on each vein to give them a three-dimensional effect. Or would they be like under the skin, like so it's flat across, right? So we have to think about like what position the hand is in. So where is the hand? It's above her heart because she's holding it like this, right? She's like this, okay? And she's holding roughly a fist. She's not... It's, it's, she's gripping the, the sword handle, right? So the veins will be below. Now, let's look at, let's look at the veins in the back of my hand, right? 
Let's go back to just camera mode. Okay, let's zoom out. Everyone says, I'm going to go like this so they hopefully come out a little more. When you ask people what color are veins, you guys should be able to see them in my hand. Right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. First, let's look at the the shape. Right. Okay. So you can see where do they go, right? They don't go on top, up here. They run in between the knuckles. So the veins in your hand go in between, okay? In between the knuckles. And it's not just that hand to prove the point. Look at my other hand, right? The veins go in between. Now, let's look at the color, right? What color are my veins? Specifically, the hue, right? You would say blue, like people would say that they're blue. Because under the skin, right, the color... Our color perception is based on the things that are surrounding it. So if you were to look at all of the orange, right, you might say they're green, you might say they're blue, okay? They are not. <laughs> this is blue, <laughs> okay? I'll, I'll make it more clear by really, by really putting some blue, like, on my hand. Okay. This is blue, right? This is not what color my veins are. Okay. So we have to mix a tone. Yeah. We have to mix a tone and even closer than that. Right. So let's take a skin tone. We're going to, we're going to make a skin tone. That's roughly my skin tone. Right, it's maybe my skin tone is maybe slightly more reddish. I'm pale. Okay. Let's find something. Okay. All right. Let's do it on this hand so you can see better because you can see the veins. Okay. So I make a skin tone. Right. See, I'm painting it on my hand there. It's pretty close. Okay. Now, I need to make a skin tone. Let's go back to the, uh, the sort, the super sort. There you go. All the cameras. All right. So I've got a skin tone. It's like this over here. I need... They have blue in them, but I need to take just a little bit of blue and create a more grayish tone to, to make something that feels blue in comparison to everything else. Uh, I, too, a, I'm just sitting here talking about skin tones. Okay, so you can see here. That this is not great, this is not blue enough. I need just a little bit more. Right? Okay. Okay. Look at the color now. So match.
Or you see what I've been doing to my other hand. <laughs> okay. So. And you can see now that it's dried, it's actually a little too, too much. So. I can take another tone like this. All right, see, now it's gone. Gone. It's dry and you can't even see it. All right, but it is there. I did paint on my hand. Okay, so what color is this really? All right, let's, let's mix up a good amount of that tone using the blue. So blue and orange, all right? Some white. Right, that's that color. Maybe just a slight amount more blue. Maybe a little too much. Okay. So, when I put this color in isolation, dry so you don't look so shiny. Oh, it's too shiny. I need to get it on something that I can turn it so you guys can't, you can see it in the light better. All right? What color is that? Right? What hue is it? Yeah, it's a, it almost feels purpley, right? It, it's a very gray with like a slight with like a slight uh, purplish feeling to it, like a lilac, like a dark lilac color, because we've got blue and then the little bit of red reddish tones in the in the orange that create a very uh, kind of dark lilac color, right? But it's very gray. So, all of that to say that veins under your skin are not blue. They, they appear blue by context. Right. Grays are very powerful. Uh, they... they um, they give you a sense of, they can feel just about any color by context. Yes, this is color constancy, color relativity. Yeah, 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 we've been painting. We're painting a figure, right? She's here. Okay. So let's paint. So now we know we don't want to have dimensionality to the veins. We don't want uh, them to be overly bluish. And we know roughly the shape that they are. They always, the veins always go between the knuckles. All right. So now we know what shape we want to do. We want to have some very subtle tone. We want some very subtle tones to create some soft veins in between the hand. Right. So this is overdoing it. Okay. You're gonna see. You're gonna see that this this even this gray appears too much. Right. But I'm going to create the veins. Where I want them and then I'm going to reduce that with the original skin tones. Who is that? Litz. Thanks to eh? it. 
GMA carbide does too much. Hello. Okay. So, all right. So now we come back in, we've painted the veins, and now we're just going to re-glaze over top to just kind of unify everything. Stop shaking. Are you going to paint a reflection on the... What? Are you going to paint a reflection of the reflection on the back sort? No. No, I'm not. Because you won't be able to see the back of the sword. Okay, so we come in and we have... We create... So soften some of this stuff down. No, there's no, no horse reflection. No more. You guys want a Trojan horse? Okay. Uh... Yeah, I'll try and be in. Just send me a message. Okay, there we go. All right, boom. Now we have very subtle veins in the back of the hand. They're not too much. create something naturalistic. We can make this one a little bit brighter. We can soften them a little because some of them are going to be more clear and some of them are going to be more shallow. Or deeper under the skin so you won't see them as clearly. They become a little more blurred. I might. I might, Jonas. I've had someone ask for it already. Night, Tui. Thanks for stopping by. Okay. And then final little adjustments here and there. Now we probably need to paint the fingernail on her thumb too, but we'll get can mess with that later. Okay, let's see how it looks on uh, on the figure. Okay. How do we how do we feel about it? Is it okay? It's maybe uh, probably needs some little adjustments here and there. Really push the lights just a tiny bit more.
This is why it's important to always put things in context with each other, right? You need to see the hand with the face, right? Make sure that the uh, the tones are working well together. Good night. Okay, I'm going to push some of this got a little too dark. That feels a little bit better. All right, this is why always, always in context, it's important. Yes, this side of the hand should actually pr probably be quite dark. So we can make this adjustment, right? So this, the hand, the light's coming this way. We can fudge some things to make uh, it look better from the main view, right? Or from certain views. Like maybe the entire thumb should be in shadow if the light's coming this way, but we can, but the light's coming this way. So we do get a little light on the thumb there. We also can see quite a bit of the back of the hand from this direction. So we need to, like I said, make, continue to make small changes. It's very fine adjustments, okay, like so. All right now, it's now it's starting to feel more natural with the the face. Then, yes, this side. It is just for funsies. Right? So we know that here and all of this needs to be much more dark based off the lighting direction. Right, because we want it to match up. So we make slow adjustments. All right, don't we're not going crazy here. Basically, most. Everything I do on stream is for just for fun. Uh, the stream painting is my time to experiment with some things.
create projects that I enjoy for the fun of it, you know, for the, for the joy of painting. There we go. Bit more accurate shadow there. And you can see as we layer these skin tones that are semi transparent over top of the uh, the veins, like they're still there. You can still see them, but they become much more subtle, right? And it's just it's just a small touch at that point. That's that kind of thing that you look at and you look up close and you're like, oh, look at that. Look at that. He painted little little veins in the hand. The thing most people will probably never notice, right? But you guys will know. You'll know they're there. Sendo88, hello. Thanks for following. Okay, how do we feel? It only took me an hour and 40 minutes to paint one hand. I will say this about painting hands, though. Uh, hands? Are the second most important thing on your figures besides the face. There's a reason Lucas sculpts like a super uh, like intricate and characterful hands on his figures. Because the Italians know this very well. But you can express a, lo a lot of emotion with your hands. Hmm. All right. I'm very much trying to push to a display. Oh, thing keeps blinking. I noticed it. Gotta hold on. Unplug it, plug it back in. Maybe that will fix it. Uh, I'm very much trying to push to a display level painting guy, entering as many comps as I can, getting lots of online instruction and taking classes where I can, really enjoying it. You have any free advice to give about this kind of stuff? If you could go back in time and tell younger Eric something, what would it be painting wise, not just <laughs> heavily on the Patriots? Uh, I don't think I would change anything, man. I think I've had a pretty successful uh, uh, painting journey. But if I could give any advice, it would be um, <sighs> being a high level painter. Let's see what 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 to say specifically about that. Man, it's it's a it's obsession, dude. You have to practice a lot, a lot, a lot. And not just it's not just like painting space marines over and over again like that's practice it'll teach you some things um brush control blah 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 but like 
dedicated practice. So like study, like you want to work on X thing. I want to improve whatever aspect of your painting. Like you have to focus on that and study. Look outside of, of miniature painting, right? Study what made great art 2D artists good painters. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and I will uh, be back in a few minutes. Let's get back to it. Huh? Let's uh, work on the, the gauntlet. We can start sketching the gauntlet in the sword. All right, so what do we need? Now, I could just mix my own gray, right? But I find it a little more convenient to just have something uh, pre-mixed, pre-mixed gray that I can just grab something, some neutral gray, right? So I don't have to sit here and try and make my own every time mixing black and black and white. Okay, so I'll just grab a couple uh, grays and I can just take some some black if I need it. All right, so let's start to make some our our blue tones for our sky. Okay, so we know that this is going to reflect the sky, right? We have a cylinder here. Make sure I'm on camera. Right, we're holding it this way. So this reflects the sky reflection. Then we're going to get into these more black and gray tones. Right, and then at the horizon, we're going to have more black. Okay. And then this lower reflection, right, would be, let's point to her, right? So this lower reflection on the gauntlet here is going to reflect that ground, that ground tone. So this, this kind of color. We get no main reflection on this part of the gauntlet. Thanks, Jared. See you later. Okay, so something like that. Uh, I do remember I used a little green. in the uh the metallic so we'll get we'll get some of that for the kind of grassy effect
right? Richard coming in with puns. Everybody watch out, the stream's gone to hell. Okay. So, get something like that. Some more intermediate mixture. We're going to have to push the light a bit more on top. Be a bit more bluish. here right so the light of the sky is more white towards the horizon and then it turns more blue as it as it moves up and away like the top of the sky is more pure blue Like such. Okay, something like so. Then we've got this shape, right? So this is a cone, right? This is part of a cone. Where are we going to get uh, the actual light reflection? Okay, so this will be like the sun reflection. Where will that appear in here? So we want to take some of this guy, get a quite sky color. Then a more intermediate mixture as we come around this shape, like so. We're just sketching a, a kind of reflection pattern. And then we get a more of that blue tone up here where the sky is more reflecting in the, the blue. And then we really have to start to push the light here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna start to add just a bit of this warm tone for the sun and really push the uh, little bit of the white. Okay, something like that. Now if we want to enhance the shape, you can of course go back and watch the previous one, but we want to create a uh, kind of reflection pattern that enhances the, the form here and the curvature of, of this shape.
-hmm. So begin to create some noise inside of the uh, inside of the form. Something like that. And then we continue with these same reflections and we're gonna make some noise in inside the uh, the cylinder itself. We don't have, we get lots of little intermediate reflections inside the main, the main form. Okay, so another little thing we can add is here where we, we would get edge lights, right? We can add some edge inside these like deep, these recessed edges. where these two planes meet each other. Hello, Balchara. How are you doing? Welcome. Okay, so we're just going to keep creating these intermediate uh, reflection points, creating noise inside of the inside all of these little reflections. Just procrastinating? All right, that's fair. Okay, so I'll make a little, maybe a little reflection there. Maybe I add another one little here. All right, we don't know what these are. It's some kind of ground, grass patch or whatever reflects inside. Then I'm going to take some black. We just with a touch of blue, just to add some color. And I'm gonna come in a little more so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to line these elements. Separate the hand. OK, 
Okay. Like so. Then we need to push the light more, more light. All right, this is the main reflection point here. This is the sun. So that one gets the very super bright reflection, right? We got to make a ton of contrast to make this believable. Then we get these edges. Right, because the space is towards the sun. So here, right? That one faces the light. Up here faces the light. And then in between these two is not going to face directly at the light, but we are going to have to create an edge there. Hello, feline dark. Welcome. Okay. These these lining this lining helps a lot in uh, selling the effect. Right, but you have to think about where. Where these lines face, right? Not all of them are facing directly at the main reflection point. Some of them face elsewhere here, like here, I can add. So if the sun reflects here, maybe I get a small reflection here where this curve is. I can add another little reflection point. Add some interest. And I can make some more neutral gray. Create that edge. And then on top, make a more slightly bluish gray light to define this edge. something like that right we can push we can play with these we can start to create some some interesting shape remember that like this is not made by a machine all right I, I try and stress this a lot so these these metallic elements they're not always going to have like perfect symmetry
Uh, Sabbath Miniatures. It's a good place. They're based in Atlanta. Uh, and a lot of, I mean, it depends on who you're looking for, but like a lot of the Spanish companies, Big Child, um, Hera, they tend to ship really fast. Like this, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the Spain brands are, are quite quick. Right, so we just keep making this noise, right? It's really going to help uh, reinforce the like random randomness that you see. Right, really push that light. Can add little dots along the edge, something like this, right? This creates um maybe there's a small scratch or ding on the armor. S A B O T. If someone wants to link it in chat, T bagging. Hello. Okay, something like that, right? So we just keep pushing the contrast. Value contrast is everything on metallic. All right, let's let's uh, check it on the figure, just to see how our sketch is coming, how it's working with the the rest of the metallic. Right, whoop. Mixing our own tones to try and get close. Okay, pretty good. Uh, some of our pure blacks might be a little black compared to what we've got on the figure. Cog. I'm just going to go cog. Hello. Okay, so, uh, but with some blending, we can tone some of that down. So I think this is pretty close to what we want over here, right? This is maybe lined a little more, or we can come in and add some more, some more black into the, the main body, right? We can, we can push the black a little more. Uh, if we want to do like a tonal black, we can mix some of the blue and the orange together. All right, something like that. You guys can't really see that. It's slightly off camera. Let me move it down a touch. Okay, this is a tonal black. So this is going to have really heavy... Uh, amount of color to it. And we can use this in a glaze to really reinforce some of this, uh, these shadow reflections.
See ya. Hi, Striker. How are you? Okay, so we just keep making little adjustments here and there. Till we get it to where we want it to be. All right, so here is the main sun reflection. So this is maybe a little bright because this isn't quite curving towards that main sun reflection. We can make small adjustments. This is also maybe a little bright. Just here in the corner of the shoulder. Uh, and then what we want to do, we haven't done yet. Got to go around and hit all these rivets. Do you have any tips uh, for some just starting to mess with OSL on how to picture where the lights should be? I mean, you can use a flashlight or like a little LED light or whatever. If, if you want, um, the, the key things to remember with, one of the key things to remember with OSL, there's a few things, but remember that light always travels in straight lines, right? We're not talking about like crazy bending light and stuff, like just light travels in straight lines, okay? Um, and... You want to consider that your OSL can only brighten things, right? This is the number one thing I see people mess up with OSL. Light can only make things brighter. Okay, so if you're if you're painting something that has white. Right? If it's white and you're trying to put OSL on it, okay, and you've painted the white the white with pure white, you cannot make it any brighter than that. Right? So if you use, say you want to paint something uh a red OSL of some kind, I don't know. And you put red on top of white. What is it doing? Okay. Red is going to look darker than that whatever white material is. So you've made it. Uh, you've done something incorrect because the, the white cannot make that object or the, the light cannot make that white object any brighter than it is. Yeah, exactly. If you if you were painting a a white scar with a with a red plasma gun, right? You painted his armor up to pure white, and then you put and then you put red on top of that white. It's not going to look right. So that area that you're trying to add light to needs to be in shadow. Exerian, hello. Thanks for following. Welcome. And Techie, hello.
that's my biggest those are my biggest tips that's what I got for you I hope that's helpful are you saying a white armor can't be affected by the light so looking you could no it absolutely can be affected what I'm saying is is that it can it can't OSL can't overpower the lights you already have on the figure, right? So if you painted uh, it in a bright light source anyways, then it, it can't it can't make it any brighter. One of my favorite uh, examples when I teach OSL is to look at uh, the Darth Maul Qui-Gon scene in episode one when they're on tattooing. The lightsabers do not cast any colored light on them because the two sons of Tatooine are way brighter than those lightsabers. So the natural light source of the two suns is going to uh, drown out any, any sort of uh, light that 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 lightsaber would cast. So if you want a if you want a really strong OSL, you gotta you gotta put it darker in a darker scene. Sean and Becca, hello, and my ghosts, welcome. Where are all these people coming from? Where are all you people coming from, huh? What do you want? Thanks, Richard. I'm glad you have such Interesting commentary for us. Redden and Z shadows. Redden, Redden Z soul shadow. Welcome. All right. So the little rivets. This is hard to see, but basically, when you do rivets, you want to paint the rivet pretty much black, and then you're going to put. Uh, Oh my god, the camera shakes so much when it's zoomed in that much. Any little tiny movement. You basically paint a small little smiley face on the bottom of the on the rivet. And then a and then a bright highlight on the top. So a little smiley face for the ground. And then a and then a darker and then a white dot on the top. Something like that. What is happening? Pipazo ninety nine. Hello, welcome. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the one more in, uh, what was that? The scene from Rogue One, at the end of Rogue One, where Vader's, like, walking down the hallway. Basically, he's all red, uh, because there's not really any other light in that scene. Hi, Pipaz. Pipao, Pipazo. 
Blue Blue 985. Hi, welcome. Oh, what the what what is going on? So that's a uh I actually was rethinking this reflection here. If we think about this red reflection here, uh, this wouldn't go behind the hand. That doesn't make any sense. So realistically, this would have to see everything above it, right? And then catch that reflection. So that reflection really doesn't make sense. Though it kind of looks cool, it, uh, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense at all. So we're going to get rid of it. We can still leave like a small shadow, but it would be so impossibly thin that it would not be there. So we just, we're going to just uh, make it go away. Well, thanks, Blue Nine. That Eric, he's so hot right now. I have no idea if that's true. We get the little reflection of her sleeve. All right, what else? What else can we do? We still got to fix the. This is a mess under here. Okay, all right, let's check again, okay? How's the hand, the hand reflection look? This may be a little, I maybe went a little too bright now with the, the reflection of the fingers. I can tone those down a little bit uh, and also blur the reflection a tiny bit as I adjust. Okay, let's go slightly more gray to blur the reflection. Everything's just about like all of this is just about these thin layers. And we're not we're not going for a mirror finish. It's close to a mirror, but it's not it's not a perfect mirror. So we're not gonna get like perfectly hard edges. Everything's just slightly foggy. Okay, check again. That's a little better. And we can add just a touch more light at the end. 
blurred again. Get a little high reflection of the knuckle. And people bring this up every time. Ooh, are you eating paint? No, I'm not eating paint. The brush is clean, all right? I wash it off. Maybe a little dirty water, but... And even if I was, what of it, huh? It's non-toxic. My non-toxic GMO-free paints. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure they're not. Uh, in in case you didn't know, let me let me tell you a little a little inside baseball. All right, here's a, here's a little inside. Here's a little inside baseball on paints. Okay. Because I know these manufacturers, to sell paints in the U.S., they have more stringent regulations than the FDA for food. It is harder to get paints cleared for sale to non-toxicity than it is to get food. They have more rigorous testing. Next time, next time you're on, uh, you know, if, if you check out, uh, that's it, Monument Hobby Stream or anything like that, ask Jason just how much regulation they have to go through to, to, to sell, to sell paint. Valen XZ GBR7 Blue 985. Hello, welcome everyone. Yeah, I know a guy who's the the biggest like probably one of the biggest paint manufacturers for hobby paints in in the US. Yeah. Yeah, I do know the guy that that sells Pro Acryl. I, he seems like I don't know, maybe it's just me, but uh he seems like a pretty trustworthy source. You know. I I know the owner of Vallejo. I uh But, you know, I mean, who's going to believe them? The guys that complain about just how many hoops they have to jump through or, you know.
Well, yeah, there you go. So. Weird. I don't make stuff up on this stream, all right? Truce. Only truce. All right, is there a part two of your Kingdom Death monster tutorial? I want to paint a soul blight army like they are lit by the moon. All the ice I can get. You mean the, the guy with the lantern? The the watcher? It's just the one video. I think. Just the one stream? Pretty sure I painted them on one stream. I don't know how much OSL I've done. Uh, there's a, I did a big tutorial. Uh, you'd have to buy, I think you have to buy the figure though. Um, and I don't know if you can still get the tutorial. There was a special edition of, whew, here we go again, me trying to remember the names of figures. Uh, it's a zombie. Andras? Maybe, no. That was, is that him? It's a zombie guy I did for, for Hera models. Yes, I do this for a living. This is my job. I paint uh, box art. I do not stream for a living. I only stream once a week. Most of my time is spent painting stuff that I can't show because it's not out yet. Like that model over there. Like that model up there. Like all those models over there. There's a box from... Uh, Big child over there. There's there's my only spoiler I'm gonna give give that I'm painting some figure. Hey, ooh, I said some. Oh, it's more than one. Oh, the second spoiler. Do you sign NDAs? Yeah, I for some people, yeah. I could say who I'm doing work for. I'm not gonna say what it is. Magenta Pikachu, welcome. Uh, there's my look at that. So no, she is not a commission. She's for fun. The stuff I do on stream is typically not commissions because, uh, like I said, I'm often not allowed to post the things that I'm currently working on. She is the stuff I do on stream anyways. I, I like to try and keep it separate. And I just do it for the enjoyment of it. No, I don't think I'll be moving the camera around. At least one of those is an elf, you say? Mm, let me think. I don't know.
All right, let's look, let's look again. Always, I'm always trying to make sure I'm checking on the figure itself. Yep. Probably would help if I just stuck some blue tack, but whatever. Yes. Okay. Feels pretty good. I think there's probably some lining I could do on her to make this some of these uh, shadows a little sharper. I'm glad you could still get to do some things for fun and personal enjoyment. I know that isn't always the case and art can end up very much like a job. This is why I do the stream. Because it uh, forces me to spend like a day a week just doing something for my and for my enjoyment i mean there's plenty of fig don't get me wrong i enjoy my job and there's plenty of figures that i paint that are purely for that i am very excited to paint and get a lot of enjoyment out of them But it's nice to do some figures that I don't really have a deadline on and I just get to do for fun. <laughs> thanks, Slavic. Or thanks, Slavic's wife. I've said this before, but makeup tutorial if you want to learn to paint female faces, makeup tutorials are. Uh, can be very good way to teach you how like the contouring of the face and everything uh, you ha will however like if, if you're a guy and you don't want to ruin your like YouTube recommendations I suggest watching them in incognito so that you don't like suddenly have it takes watching like one video for YouTube to be like, oh, is this this is what you like now? We're going to show you nothing but this. So I would heavily suggest uh, incognito mode. Who that? Yep, not even going to try that one. Hello. That is way too many vowels in a row. Welcome to the stream. Okay. Cool. So, 
That's uh, roughly her actual armor, right? Now we got to paint the sword. So what we can do, I like like to recommend this as this is a little tip for you guys. What we can do is we can line up the camera or the lights, your eyeballs, whatever the case. So we've got a light source coming from this way. I can grab a flashlight actually. Give me two seconds. Where's a flashlight? Uh, now I'm just getting weird stuff. I don't know what's happening with followers today. Uh, where's my flashlight? I guess I could just use my phone. So, I can take my phone, right? I'm going to hold up a, a thing. And you can see on the black primer, when I move this around, you can see where the lights show up on the black primer. So I can line up the lighting, the light source, with the with the direction of the sun and see where those bright spots hit right shouldn't russia be asleep right now we just got all the russian bot farms they're all interested in what the heck this mini painter is doing Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just some of this light gray real quick. And I'm going to end up painting over top of this. But based off of where those main reflection points are, I'm just going to place some lights. Where I think these, uh, these main reflections would be. Filters. Hello. Right, so here, here, this is where like the sun, the big super shiny reflections are going to hit. Here, here, and then I get one more like this. Hey, so that's my high points, right? These will eventually be like the white reflections. Everything else will be intermediate reflections or ground reflections. Some people like to mark out the final lights first. Some people just know where the heck they're going to be. Some people might find that useful. Lenny's brushes. Hello. Lenny. Hey, Lenny. So now I can mark out some of the sky. All right, so similar process as the uh, as the gauntlet, right? where we sketch and then refine. But this, in this case, I just right at the beginning just marked the location of our of our uh, brightest reflections
Well, this one's interesting because this is the sword, right? So here we can consider that maybe we would get like a second reflection of the of the gauntlet. We can just, I don't know, make make something that, you know. Random, some random noise. Metallic is very weird. So, if you don't know exactly what to do, that's all right. Then I'll mark out some of the ground reflections, like here. On the bottom of the hill, underneath the little cross guard. I'm sure these have a word because everything involving uh, swords like this has some word a word. Oh yeah, you know the it's probably some French word too or German. Okay, we get some of the ground reflections in. And we can get more dark blue reflections here just to give some shape. Not like blue like the sky blue but just something with some color in it some of these other ones are going to be like super bright and if we're going for a that high polished steel sun reflection we want to go really shiny bright on some of these reflection points. All right, so if you just be consistent and smart in where you place them, you can pretty quickly create the illusion of, of the shiny material and then it's all it's all just about refining that that light in those placements. Here we can put a shine on the edge of the sword just to uh, it's going to help separate it from the the armor. We can define the the fuller. This one I actually do know the word for. So we can go pretty bright. And then we need the fuller, which is the little groove down the middle. I'm gonna go sword nerd on you real quick. It's not a blood groove. It is a it is just there to lighten the sword. while still maintaining rigidity. Yes, I said that, a fuller. OK, 
Okay, so something like that. Another little reflection. Okay, so. Quillian, I've heard that term before. Quillian is the name of the arms of the cross. Okay. Yeah, I might watch blacksmithing channels on YouTube from time to time. Who doesn't, you know? Sure, the ball quillion. All right. It still has a term, though. Quillion's got to be French. Quillon. It almost makes sense. It's it's uh it's pretty straightforward. If you can if you can be like I said, the number one key to making good non-metallic is consistency, first of all. That's the number one most important thing. Is just being consistent with where you place the highlights. So getting your shapes right, and being consistent where you place the ref high, the highlight reflections, then the n the number two most important thing is high contrast. Then you can start to create all kinds of fun noise and and things. But if you can get the uh, the reflection points consistent across the surface that they all match up and create a believable illusion then you got it sir went hello welcome
So, for example, here on the pommel, I want to create a little a little edge that separates this plane from that plane. Right. So defining the elements is another key factor. Sort of reminds me of something. I'm sure this pommel has been done before. Like, I'm sure there's some historical reference to this style of pommel. But it reminds me of uh, the Witcher sword. Narsil? Is it? What's Nar Narsil is. Uh, is that Gandalf sword? No. Who is it? Narsil. Oh, it's Aragon sword. And then they renamed it, right? Then, because then I thought it was like Arendelle or something. Anduril. Anduril, okay, is the name of the reforged version. Yeah, it does. It has a uh, glammed glammed ring. Is uh, what's it called? Yes, it does have the same pommel as as Narsil. It almost has the same cross guard, actually. the The only difference is that uh, on Narsil, the the Quillon has uh, the these this motif repeated on the uh, on the end of the cross guard instead of balls. But yes, it's very similar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I learned a new word, so I'm going to use it. The word of the day is Here's the real question, though. What's the correct, correct pronunciation? How to say Quillon? Come on. Quillen. 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 Quillen, you guys. X ray. Hello, welcome. Quillen. You're damn right I am. Okay, we don't want quite all this black here. So like this black works pretty good, but we don't want too much. We need still need to define these shapes. So 
we gotta get some color into here. This is if I don't know exactly what I want this to reflect, this is when I'm happy to just uh, use some random grays. And I'm just trying to define this shape so that it stands out against the background, right? The perfect reflection is is not exactly important. Because the reflection changes depending on what's what angle you're viewing it at. So here I just want to create a uh, an edge so that it's when you have something dark behind it, you can see. Quillen. <laughs> the word of the day is... I just remember Pee Wee. Am I, am I too old for that? I'm going to show my age. Oh, Krillin. Like I'm saying it like a like a three-year-old would say Krillin. Ah, Quillin. That'll certainly help me remember the word. Alright, so what we want to do. So here on the sword blade. We want to make this look really shiny. We're going to really push the light on one side, favoring. Interesting thing about swords is this is a pretty flat plane, so you don't get a ton of uh, variation. Right? What we would get is we'd get really strong contrast between the two sides, and you get more subtle variation in the actual blade, in the blade itself. Okay. Then we're gonna accentuate the edge and we'll, and we'll push the light in the edges. Then we push the light a little more to, but really we're trying to create contrast between the two bevels. Right? Not a massive gradient down one edge of the sword. It doesn't really make sense. The video you clicked on said Quillion. Quillion? Damn it. Now we don't know what the correct pronunciation is. See, Quillion sounded more, looked more correct to me, but can I get the etymology? Country of origin, please. Can you use it in a sentence?
All right, so I keep pushing the light, right? So now the blade is getting pretty shiny. All right, pretty strong, pretty strong light here. And pretty heavy darks on the other side. And then I'm gonna reduce on the, the fuller a little bit in the middle. Cause I wanna make it appear it's not like a V, a slot, okay. Oh, good. Now uh, Tebow can watch this video again tomorrow, and once and another week he can go. Your French pronunciation sucks. Hello, Von Duke, Von Duke, Von Duque. All right. Let's push the light. Let's really make a shine. Thank you. We'll show them the figure here in a second. Just trying to get some of the light on this blade really intense. It's a pretty important element. What I mean by consistent is that if I'm going to place a high shine here, right? And this has the same, it's the same plane at the same rough angle. I need to put a high shine there also, right? Uh, a darker background. All right, hold on. I can do that. I have an iPad nearby that is basically black. All right, I have my iPad case. That's black. Okay, let's look on the Let's look on the figure. So, shiny sword, right? Now the sword is now reflecting. Context is starting to make more sense, right? We've got the sword reflecting in the brush plate with the hand and blah, blah, blah. And the quillion is reflecting in the, in the chest plate, right? All the good stuff. Let's, let's zoom out slightly and look at her on black. Let's angle it so it's really black. We got some dust on it. So high black. What do we think? Works. 
So, I mean, at this point, right, like, just about everything is sketched. And there's still a lot more work to do on the back. Um, obviously, like, none of this is done. Uh, and yes, I if I was painting for competition, if this was a competition figure, everything, the back would be just as rendered as the front is. Okay, I don't leave my the backs of my figures unpainted. Um, so I would have to push all of this, all of this stuff would have to get worked on. Um, all of this would get done, blah, blah, blah. Right, but this gives you a pretty good idea of where she's at. Let's take a little piece of blue tack so we can stick this on so I don't have to sit here and like hold it with my thumb. Zubuma. Hello. Show the back? I just did show the back. It's, it's like unpainted. Yeah, let's do that. Just so we can hold it in place. Uh, and then she's got a shield that goes on her back too that's not painted yet. All right, let's take her off the blind. Okay. How do we feel? Pretty good? I'm feeling pretty good about her. Yeah, there's still, still more work to do, a lot of refinement to do, but I'm going to start sketching some of the back. Sketch some of the back shoulder here. While I'm looking at it. Okay, just to get some some color on it. What do you guys think, huh? Uh, Bam. I think it just kind of came together. First, I wasn't like super in love with the uh, the the like high polished chrome kind of look. Well, it's not high polished, but the sort of chromey look is not really a thing I do very often, but uh. As, as it started to come together, I, I started to like it more. I think, it, I think it's pretty neat. Thanks, Zazel. Yeah, I think I think with the uh, the hand in place, yeah, obviously it makes more sense. And does it make sense from this side? Yeah, roughly. So, obviously it kind of stops working when you go like that doesn't make as much sense right that that reflection really wouldn't work like that from that angle but i'd say for everywhere from like here to here kind of works and then it, these extreme angles like yeah they don't really make sense right like this would not for at this angle you'd probably start seeing other reflections right the, pretty much from here over this would now just only reflect the sky but but I think everything from like here to here works quite well. And that's just part of the, this is, uh, you know, pitfalls of, of NMM. You, you never are going to 
have like the uh, the perfect scenario where the the reflection works from every single angle. It's just not the way. It just ain't the way it works. But there's no way we could do this with metallic paint, right? The only way we could achieve this with metallic paint is if we did a chrome metallic paint and then took photos of her while she's outside, right? And even then the reflections probably wouldn't work quite the same because the scale changes. Um, but in the end, we have to make decisions that, uh, you know, make compromises to try and get it as working as much as possible from, from multiple angles. Right? So when we start to do this side of the armor, right? So from here, well now the sun's going to be like here, right? So we've got to put a what would this, would the sun reflect here? Or would we reflect just the sky? Probably just the sky. We could, we could add a sun reflection, but then you get this kind of weird angle where you're getting a sun reflection from both sides. And that doesn't necessarily make sense. So I kind of think that you would just do more of a sky reflection and then that sky reflection would get a little brighter as it comes down. Probably a little more gray. I don't know, I'd have to go look at sky. What's the... But yeah, typically you get more white and gray towards the horizon. And something like this. And then eventually it turns to the horizon. Well, if you looked at her from this way and the sun was up here, right? You would actually get like a reflection of the sun like right here. But it doesn't make sense uh, when you look at it from the side. So you don't want to do it. Instead, we could just kind of gray it out. Eventually get some kind of black in there. We probably need to push that a lot more. All right, something more like this. Kind of follow the shape. It can be a little random because it could be, uh, you know, there's some kind of mountain range or, or something in the background, and then this needs to get softened into more a more round shape. more blue I like to introduce some randomness could be clouds or something I don't know all right 
So real quick, let's take some of this yellow. And we're going to put some in the transition point here. All right? Let's zoom in so you guys can see this. This is this is subtle. All right? We want to take a little bit of the yellow. All right? And just where the, at the edge of that bright reflection I'm going to get a little bit of that orange in there. We can have it kind of go over top, right? so it goes like in the middle, into the shadow reflection a little bit. And that's going to blow out that reflection. And make it look uh, kind of sunny. All right, get that little bit of orange on the edge of the sun. We can do the same thing here. Not too much, right? So it's a little touch. But a little bit of warmth is gonna is makes that uh, that sun spot look really intense and warm, especially against all that blue. Hello, fluffy towels. Welcome. Okay. Let's so, analyze a little bit more. I think I want to bring some of that bright reflection over a little more on the the pommel right because the main view is a little more sideways so i can make that one a little more intense and then this really dark line here doesn't make sense we could also in the back of the sword The handle here. Got a little, little skin tone. It's gonna be skinny, but maybe her her face reflects in the in the sword just a touch.
Do you guys have any questions about any of this stuff? All this, uh, this is all very clear and easy to understand, and you guys are ready to go out and paint your your knight in shining armor. Ask them questions if you got them. I think I'm getting ready to wrap up for the night. Exhausted. Catch you later. Mm. Push that a little more. Like that reflection to be slightly more obvious. Oh, okay. No questions. Everybody's everybody's got it. Can you review the colors on your palette? I sure can. Pretty simple. Okay. What do we got? We've got <clears throat> No, no, no burnt sienna and raw umber. So we've got black, phthalo blue. We're going to skip this for a second. Orange, aralide yellow, which is like a yellowish orange. Uh, ivory, which I like more than pure white. And like titanium white or something. Magenta, a greenish yellow that I just grabbed to mix some green. Um, called ground brown and a neutral gray. But these were just, I could mix this right now, right? Like I could take this. Those are purely on the palette to make it easier on myself to make that color, right? If I wanted to make that color right there. This, which is that. All right. I just put this on the palette because it makes it, uh, it's just shortcutting. It's like, oh, I already made this mixture. I can just grab a paint that I already have that's, that's that color and use that. So, uh, yeah. Black, phthalo blue. Oh, elfic blue is the same. Same deal, where it's like, if I wanted to mix this, right? This elfic blue, which is a pre-mixture. So I can grab some blue, a little bit of magenta, some white, right? So right now that's not, this is quite blue. It's not enough magenta. So 
a little magenta, a little more magenta. You need quite a bit, actually, more than what you think. Yeah, here. Okay, we're getting closer. And then just a little orange to desaturate a touch. And then some more magenta. A little more white. Pretty close. It's actually even more magenta than that. Ta-da! Right? So these are what I call short shortcut colors. I just made that up. I don't call them that at all. And I do now. Shortcut tones. So it's like I could mix that color with what I have on the palette, but it's easier for me to just grab a color that, like, I know I'm going to end up using. And then just, uh, and then just doing it, right? So I don't have to make that mixture every time. This one I probably can't make. This is, this is too pure green. That, that ain't happening from what I've got. I could take just the tiniest amount of blue and probably some of this Daryllide yellow, but there's no way I'm going to get a green like that. It's just not possible. Hey, it's got too much orange in it to, to get close to that green. But I'm not using this pure anyways. I'm just using it to tint. Yeah? Okay. Mando Sniper and Blood... Blue Frog. Hello, welcome. Thanks for following. I hope that was uh, uh, helpful. Yeah. Right. And obviously, this gray could just make a mixture of black and carbon black and white. I don't have any ivory black to show you guys, but this is uh, specifically carbon black. So what there is to know about carbon black is carbon black turns very neutral gray when you mix white into it. Okay. Unlike ivory black, which turns like blue, blue gray when you mix uh, white into it, ivory black would be more like that anyways and we painted the back of our hands today carbon black and yellow well, remember this has a lot of orange in it so but yes, if you, let me add a bunch of yellow and then some white. This is not going to turn super green. This is going to turn very sandy, right? But if you used a cold yellow, something like this, for example, I can do it for you real quick. <laughs> this is going to look very greenish. See how much more cold yellow that is? What you probably refer to more as a pure yellow. Lemon yellow. Lemon yellow sun. Yeah, you end up with a much more greenish tone. Looks pretty gray on camera, but in person this feels quite green. Cool.
All right. We'll see who's streaming. Who's that? It's no, it's no coal, no, no troll. I don't know. No, these are not heavy body. This is heavy body. This is a heavy body acrylic. These are significantly thicker. These are more fluid, fluid acrylics. Okay. Twitch. Uh, oh, I can stop recording now. <laughs>